morning, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, welcome to the second lecture in the, uh, our cultural uh, program organized by the Department of Translation. Our guest today is a special one. I'm very proud and very happy uh, to sit side by side with uh, Mr. Abrahim Talab, Assistant Professor. He is a teacher in the Al Iraqiya or uh, Iraqiya uh, University uh, Department of Translation uh, also, and he teaches which uh, 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 very good. Uh, all types of uh, translations. He is uh, teaching in the uh, college, College of Arts, Al Iraqiya University Department of Translation. Uh, why I'm proud and I'm happy because uh, I'm sitting with uh, Mr. Ibrahim. Mr. Ibrahim and uh, Mr. Ala, both of them, and Mr. Muhammad, all uh, the three are my students. Are my students. You I have, yes, I have got them in the VA. They were sitting in front of me just like you are uh, doing now. I have taught them, I believe, novels, uh, novels and the drama. Yes. Uh, novels, times, Mr. Uh, and uh, the three of them proved to be very serious, very smart, very intelligent, very hard-working uh, students. Uh, they never fail me or they live up to my expectations. They complete their higher studies in A. Uh, they got their MA degree. Mr. Muhammad and Ala, and I wish them to complete their high studies PhD. And currently, Mr. Ibrahim is a PhD student, Talib Mahalat Doctorat. He's in the course of writing uh, a PhD dissertation in the department supervised by Dr. Mehdi Al Ghazali, our honorable uh, professor. Uh, Mr. Ibrahim Talad, uh, let's say, just to introduce him, he is very prolific uh, scholar, very promising scholar, very active, uh, whether in publishing uh, papers, whether in attending seminars or organizing seminars, organizing workshops, for example, uh, delivering lectures also, and this is one of his uh, activities. Not only that, he is an excellent translator and an excellent writer also. Uh, uh, I'll give you examples later on. Also, he is a member in the editorial board of uh, Medad uh, or Midad, Midad al Adab in Al Iraqiya University. Adu Tahrir in Hadi al Majilla al Mu'tabarat. Uh, approved by High Ministry uh, of, uh, let's say, um, Education. As for uh, writing, he wrote, and he is self-translator. The first is, uh, this is the second edition of his novel, al Nida Al-Tarek. He wrote this uh, novel, and I do encourage the uh, Department of Translation here to, uh, let's say, uh, study it or to consider it in a paper, an academic paper. Also, ah, but he self-translated. This is the first, this is the first version of the novel, and this is the second, and this is the, it's a translation. So he is what we call in translation, self-translator. He wrote something and he himself translates it, dear student. Another we have here, my dear student, let me just uh, uh, read for you. The studies of applied linguistics in light of translation, interpreting, semantics, and discourse analysis. It seems a very big project. Uh, in, uh, let's say, uh, very good. Uh, let's say it is an honorary um, PhD, uh, let's say from Denmark by Dr. Ibrahim um, Talat Ibrahim Al-Bayati. And 
here also we have introduction to translation and concise reference with regard to English into Arabic translation and vice versa. It is by Al-Dakira uh, for publishing and uh, uh, let's say uh, distribution. So as I told you, he's very prolific, very active, a scholar and a translator also. My dear student, our topic today, as it is very clear in the uh, poster here, is, uh, let me read it, Tahnir Pragmati Khitabi Lil Amtal Al Baghdadi and Mutarjama Ila Al Lugar Arabiya. I'm sure using the proverbs is a daily practice. Proverbs, of course, I will not dwell uh, for a long time in uh, introducing them to you because this is. I believe the job of uh, Mr. Abrahim Talat. He uh, will talk to us or will introduce to us what do you mean by proverbs, uh, history of a proverbs, maybe types of a proverbs, what is the best, let's say, what are the best strategies for dealing with the translation of a proverbs, which is the focus from a pragmatic, discursal, um, let's say, approach. Um, uh, let me just to I'm sure that most of you have watched the, uh, a play, Iraqi play called Al Khayt wal Asfur. How many of you? Yeah. Al Khayt wal Asfur by Amal Taha and by. Al Khayt wal Asfur, this play, very comic play, very interesting play. From the beginning to the end, it's dealing with um, uh, proverbs. Where's the Ibarat? She's not. Um, uh, in the al Asfur, we have a number of proverbs, okay, in active or staged. Uh, the proverb is told, and then we have a scene performed by the actors to tell. One of them, they say, Abu al-Mathal ma khalashi ma gale. Abu al-Mathal ma khalashi ma gale. Series. Let me, for example, because they are different from the paper delivered by uh, the proverbs included in the paper that will be delivered by uh, Mr. Ibrahim. Uh, let me uh, share with you these uh, Iraqi proverbs, called Iraqi uh, uh, proverbs. My your ghost? Okay. 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 Very good. Let's see. And, حلم الطبيعة أحسن من حلم الجهانة. For example, أقول لك يا بنتي. أغراب يقول أغراب. وتشك أسود. Very good. فأنتو يعني I'm sure. عيش القبل. درس حاجة. Very good. عرس واوية What is عرس واوية طبعا هسه مثلا للشرق يضرب في الأمر القصير المدة شبه بعرس بنات آوى لأنهن يعني they for example make love for a very short period of time بالوجه مراية Look at my dear student. يعني it is left, it is the task, or it is left for Ibrahim to explain this. But look at, they are very short sentences, very short. But they are very deep in their meanings, and they deliver messages. And they are not out of context. Each is a story by itself that tells us about situation and event, characterization of person. Do we have a proverbs in literature, dear students? Shakespeare, for example. I'm not teaching you Shakespeare. If you deal with Shakespeare's place, you will find tens of a proverbs, okay, now very prevalent in English society, in English-speaking uh, countries. Let me share with you also some of Shakespeare's um, the proverbs. Uh, Shakespeare is a renewer, as we say. Um, for example, in Julius uh, Caesar, it's all Greek to me. What does that mean? 
It's all Greek to me. This is uh, Cicero, uh, for example. Casca. Uh, tells the Protestant uh, Cassius that uh, Cicero was talking in uh, uh, something, but it's all Greek to me, which means I understand nothing out of it. It's all Greek to me. What else, dear student? I will not, of course, uh, um, more sin than uh, sinning. This is uh, another. Not all that glitters is gold. This is again a proverb in uh, Shakespeare day. Uh, what we call, a dog will have his day. Dog will have his day. This is again, you find it in the place of Shakespeare. Uh, eat out of house and home. El guru, the green-eyed minister. Give the devil his uh, uh, due. Ferality, thy name is woman. Sorry. Uh, what else? Lie low, as dead as dog nail. Send him packing. Send him packing and uh, many, many, my dear students. Uh, good riddance to be happy when someone or something is done. So, brother is part of our life, is part of our culture. All societies have proverbs of their own. Uh, Mr. Rahim will deal with the difficulty or difficulties of translating Baghdadi proverbs into uh, Arabic. Please listen to him and welcome him, welcome our glorious honorable guest, Mr. Rahim uh, Talat. He was a student like you and now he is a teacher and a colleague. Uh, uh, let's say, uh, a colleague of mine. Thank you very much for attending. Uh, the floor is yours, uh, Mr. Rahim. Well, at first, I have to express my profound thanks and appreciation to Professor Dr. Hana Ahmed-Rani for this nice introduction and nice presentation. In fact, just call me Ibrahim. I'm always Ibrahim in the eyes of my dear, glorious professor, like Dr. Rahim, and my dear brother, Ala, uh, Mr. Ala. Uh, in fact, uh, I'm very thankful to Dr. Rahim al kaimi my dear professor, for attending my uh, seminar. And I'm very thankful as well to our dear friend and brother, Mr. Ala and Mr. Mr. Muhammad. And thank you so much for you all for attending. I hope that I'll be up to your expectations, in fact. Today, we are going to tell you something important about the Pragma Discourse Analysis. In fact, this idea came to my mind last year when I was sitting at the office in Iraq University, a student knocked my door. His name is Mohammed Sa'dun al Musawi. He is one of my best students in Iraq University. He told me, Professor, I'm thinking of choosing you to be my supervisor. I told him, you have to go to Mr. Head, Hassan al Dr. Hassan al and tell him that I want you to do this for me. He came to my office again. He said, he's OK. This is why. I offered him a suggestion, which is concerned with progress. He told me, I'm thinking of literature and translation. I told him, okay, go ahead, go for it. After few or few hours, in fact, he called me back. He said, I'm going to choose the pragmatic course and announce I told him, it's okay, but think of something important first. Think of the model. You are going to make a happy marriage between pragmatics and discourse analysis, and they are big fields, in fact, under the umbrella of linguistics. So, he decided to carry out his plan. I edited his plan as well. We arrived at this title, the role of pragmatic discourse analysis of the Dai Proverbs translation into English. So, introduction. In fact, Professor Lettana has left me nothing to say because she already explained everything concerning Proverbs. So I'm going to add this old. Proverbs is everywhere in our life. Proverbs is simple and deep. So, simple and deep are two faces of one coin when it comes to Proverbs. Why? Because once you are going to have something like a spark in your mind, you're going to mention a proverb so as to let the others be notified. So, translating proverbs is uniquely different from other types of 
phrases and clauses in English. Why? Because it has more than one shape. And you need to make a very incredible effort for the sake of shaping it in the target language. Sometimes you face huge difficulty. And this is what the student found during the translation. Why? Because they can't find an appropriate or suitable equivalent in the TL. This is why our research project decided to do the following. We have brought 10 Baghdadi programs and we have run these programs in the RLC. What does this RLC mean? RLC means real life context. I have crammed them in the RLC. And we have decided to what? To carry out the theoretical part. Our theoretical part consists of the following. Translation, pragmatics, discourse analysis. Translation types, we focus on literary translation. Pragmatics, we focus on the serial and Austin. And we especially focus on the elimination reforms of Austin. This is the, our selective plan. When it comes to discourse analysis, we have focused on something super important, which is called WEDAC. Why did I choose WEDAC for this study? WEDAC is concerned with historical discourse analysis. So when you think about translating proverbs, you need to think about its historical background. Why these programs were born in language? This is why pragmatic discursal were coined on the basis of pragmatic elucidation force of Austin and WEDAC historical discourse analysis. And now we are going to talk about the hypotheses of the research. But then programs have historical origins and are used in interpersonal communication as a speech act. Both professional translators and undergraduates will encounter several difficulties while translating them into the TL. Not all participants will successfully produce appropriate equivalents in the TL due to these difficulties. Number four, not all participants will be familiar with Baghdadi proverbs, although they are living in Baghdad, and some of them were living in different Iraqi governments whose origin are Baghdadis, they face difficulty. So it's within the same culture, they face difficulty. Why? Because they are not making use of it on a daily basis. So it's a daily basis technique. Here we talk about the methodology. As you know, we were living in COVID-19 era last year. We couldn't meet each other face to face every day, every time, every hour. I made use of Google Form, Google Form strategy. I have added these 10 Baghdadi proverbs in the Google form, and I have sent the link to 10 graduate, undergraduate professional translators who graduated and who are still students in Iraq University, and they carried out the translation. And in fact, the fiasco happened now. The sad moment came to light. Some of them employed Google Translate only. This is the funny thing, this is the irony. And they have been exposed because proverbs are not dealt with Google. I'm sorry for that. You need to think about background knowledge. You need to activate your mind a little bit. This is why some of them failed. Some of them were not able to carry out the problem. Some of them succeeded to a certain extent. Others were successful enough. So their age were between 22 and 30 who were selected random. In presenting the study, we have presented two types of results qualitative and quantitative results. We need to talk about the final point concerning methodology. We counted on a Sheikh Jalal Hanafi, 1962, in explaining the Baghdadi Proverbs and, and Abdul Rahman as well, 1971. The Proverbs selected for the study are Ba'ad Kharabi Basra, Matfid al Abu Ada made use of an Ehfal min al darbad. Of the zin lo yixal. Rihat al bayt Allah, mum fi bayt Dawa. And others. I selected two types of proverbs today for reasons of time. 
sweet squeeze. This is why we are going to think in depth the analysis. We are going to read the RLC for you at the beginning so as to see how the translation will be presented. Ali, Ani Mafrood, Hessa Talib, Kuliya, Mahal, Rawa. Bess, Batalit, Ben Medrasa, Lemon Chip, Bill Adalfi, Ahmed. لو ما بنعرف ما عرف بالدراسة بهيش مرحلة بس نسوي بعد خراب البصرة ما في الحساب That was an RLC The students invented that Let's say RLC and he crammed the uh, proverb in it The TT translation I'm supposed to be a senior student right now but I dropped out when I was in high school Ahmed, if I wear you the impossible case of it if I wear you, I wouldn't drop it. It don't cry over spilled milk. So, don't cry over the spilled milk is defined as the established equivalent for the Baghdadi program, which is concerned with Baghdadi program. So, you may think something important now. You may think about it. Say, hi, Baghdadi. El Basra is Jababanus. Didn't you think about this question? It's found in Baghdad, although it's concerned with Basra. How is that? The program goes back to the 8th century. In 1886, a revolt against the Abbasid Khilafat erupted. The insurgency which began in Basra in modern-day southern Iraq and headed by Ali ibn Muhammad featured تعرفون الأزمة الأوكرانية الروسية الآن 
جميع المعدلات فاقترحت كلمه يوكرين للدلاله على فقدان الامل وخيبه الامل
اذا سمعتم برجل تغير عن قبله فلا تصدقوا به وانه يصير الى ما جبل عليه. اذا there is some sort of linkage here. Don't believe in it if you find someone changed after a long period of time of this old habit and this frequent old habit, let's say, in his life. Let's talk about the pragmatic. Semantically, the proverb refers to people and their unchanging habits. All of us have in life, whether in the streets, at home, we have people, even children, who have unchanged habits. And this is applied to them. Pragmatically, the proverb refers to people who are often reluctant to change the ways of doing something. This is said by Antigrity, Abdul Hamid, 1971. This is his explanation. The proverb has the allocationary force of implicit representative speech. Allocationary force of implicit representative speech. As an affirmation, I affirm you that he's never changed. Abu Ada made his mutara, what does it mean? Abu Ada made his mutara. And I think now I'm going to say that 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 her grandmother will not change her habits. So, if you want to be successful in transcending this type of literary work, or literary phrase, or pose, you name it, you must work on doing the pragmatics and this course analysis research and analysis. So you can translate it haphazardly. You need to analyze it pragmatically and on the discourse level. And this course analysis, as I know, I said in the PhD program, is all different types. We have Berkeley, we have Van Dyke, we have Van Leeuwen, we have Jeffries, which is called critical stylistics, and we also have what Wada, which is concerned with historical discourse analysis, which is the point of our today's seminar. So let's talk about the results of the study. Proverbs are familiar and well-known expressions that play an integral role in our life. Exactly. Baghdadi programs have historical backgrounds deeply rooted in our society. All over Iraq, not only in Baghdad. Because we can make use of these Baghdadi programs even in Basra, in Slemaniya, in Sanaqin, in Diyala. The results of the questionnaire suggest that 49% of 10 Baghdadi programs are rendered pragmatically, 49% only, 10% inappropriately, 9% semantically, with the remaining 32% not rendered at all. The ones who failed. A number of participants are unfamiliar with Baghdadi proverbs since they are from different governorates. Because some students live in uh, Karbala, in Najaf, in Mosul, some of them, but however, others were successful in it, although they were living in different Iraqi provinces. Some translators are unfamiliar with proverbs and instead of dealing with them as a whole sentence, they employ metaphrase. Some professional translators and undergraduate students are unfamiliar with proverbs in either source or target language. They have no idea at all. Using Google Translate, this is a big flag, a red flag raised here. Give this in mind. Using Google Translate, translate proverbs produces imprecise and wrong translations. I never advise you to make use of Google on your work. Try to make use of Google in translating words. Only words. It can give you different types of explanation, but don't you ever think about translating by employment of Google throughout your life. It's gonna cause you a big headache. Some participants were unable to find matching proverbial expressions in target language because they use regular or online dictionaries. Professional translators and undergraduate students lack the use of proverbs in daily life, especially our generation, your generation. We are going to talk about the solutions for translating Baghdadi proverbs. Translators need to be more knowledgeable about source and target language culture. This is something to take for granted. Translators need to be more familiar with proverbs both in SL and TL to find the appropriate representative. 
translators must avoid many phrases and instead attempt to grasp the proverb's hidden meaning and identify English equivalents. Using specialized dictionary for proverbs instead of Google Translate and other regular dictionaries to avoid direct translation and find appropriate English equivalents. We arrived at the conclusion. Sorry for being gone. Since proverbs are widely used to deliver advice and warning, impart moral and educational lessons and express distinct societal viewpoints, their use would make language more powerful and elegant. So, making use of proverbs will make your language stylish. Let's put it in this context, whether in Arabic or English. When you make use of English proverbs with someone living in the US, he's gonna think that you are well versed in English. This person is well versed in English because he knows how to speak English language fluently and he knows how to make use of these words in the appropriate context. Professional translators and undergraduate ones face several challenges. Lack of knowledge, using some easy, ready-made works, using online websites that Google Translate, all these things are defined as flaws. Some undergraduate failed to grasp the proverb met metaphorically and they have limited knowledge of English language. Proverb translation becomes easier with deeper knowledge of the language and culture with which translators are working. And thank you so much for attending and listening. Thank you so much. Thank you very much, Mr. Abraham.